Um, but today I'm preaching on, on faithfulness or how to be faithful men. Um, so some are requirements for being a pastor or a deacon, um, but they're all applicable to all men and women. You know, so how we can be faithful to God. Um, there are many ways that you must be found faithful, but I'll just cover three of those uh, in this sermon. Um, now, I believe that all qualifications in 1 Timothy and in Titus must be met by pastors and deacons to ever hold those positions. Um, but the first one we're going to cover is being faithful as a husband and a father. So this is going to be an example. Uh, the, the pastor should be an example of God the Father to the congregation, just like you should be an example of God the Father to your children and to your wife. Um, so, but the first point, the sub point of that is you must be the husband of one wife found faithful to one woman till death. So if you want to turn to 1 Timothy chapter 3, we'll spend most of the time there. We'll be going to a few other places. But in 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 2, it says, A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. So what this means is no divorced man should ever be a pastor. And the same applies to all men. You're to be faithful to your wife and have only one wife till death. So in Matthew chapter 5, verse 31, Jesus says, It hath been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. Now, we've already covered what this fornication is. That's when you, you haven't yet consummated the marriage, but you've found her to be unclean. Um, but if you put away your wife or marry a woman, you, co you cause her to commit adultery. If you marry a woman who's been put away, then you are committing adultery. And this is not being found faithful. In Mark 10, if you want to turn there, we'll read from verse 1 to 12. But this is, this is a, a similar example of, of Christ, what Christ said in uh, Matthew chapter 5. It says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Sorry. And he arose from thence and came into the coast of Judea by the farther side of Jordan. And the people resort unto him again, and as he was wont, he taught them again. And the Pharisees came to him and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? Tempting him. And he answered and said unto them, What did Moses command you? And they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away. And Jesus answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart he wrote you this precept. But from the beginning of the creation God made the male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. And in the house his disciples asked him again of the same matter. And he said unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife, and marry another, committeth adultery against her. And if a woman shall be put away her husband, and be married to another, she committeth adultery. So the Lord has joined you and your wife together in one flesh. You know, 1 Corinthians 7, 4, it says, The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise, also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. So when you make that vow, you make it till death. And that's the death of the husband or the wife. Only then are you free to remarry if they please. You know, the husband must also instruct their wives on how to behave. We see in 1 Timothy 3, 11, it says, Even must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. So a faithful man is going to have a faithful wife. You know, it shows you can rule your own house, and that's your training ground for how you take care of the church of God. So in 1 Timothy 3, 5, it says, For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? So there's a second sub-point to this as well, of being, uh, being found faithful as a father. So in 1 Timothy 3, 4, it says, One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection, with all gravity. So how do you teach your children to be subject unto you? Proverbs 13, 24 says, He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. So you teach children to be subject unto you with the rod. You know, and it shows you love your children and they'll fear you and they'll fear God. And it's something that is to be taken seriously. You know, your children's lives actually depend on you correcting their behavior with the rod. Proverbs 23.13 says, Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod, 
and shalt deliver his soul from hell. So it's not a suggestion, it's a commandment to discipline your children with a rod. You know, not with your own wisdom, not by having timeouts or, you know, withholding something from them. You know, that's not punishment, but with the rod of correction. You know, and that's how God said to discipline the children, and it's also how he disciplines us. So in Psalm 94.12, it says, Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teachest him out of thy law. Psalms 118, verse 18. The Lord hath chastened me sore, but he hath not given me over unto death. Uh, Proverbs 3.11. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. So point two is to be faithful in your reputation. That's before God and before men. So there are sub points for this as well. The first one being being found faithful in doctrine. So in First Timothy three, if you're still there, just verse nine it says, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. First um, Timothy one nineteen says, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning the faith, have made shipwreck. Titus two one, which is another pastoral epistle, um, says, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. That they may teach young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men likewise, Exhort to be sober-minded in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. So you have to be faithful in a doctrine to teach the things of God, you know, to where men cannot speak evil of you for what you teach and preach. You know, so you'll always have your opposition from the unsaved, especially with a sermon like this morning. You're always going to get opposition for that. But that's the word of God. You know, don't let it be your, let it be your, your doctrine that causes them to blaspheme, not, you know, your behavior. You know, let them hate the word and the truth because the Lord will reward the faithfulness when you teach sound doctrine. So in, in 2 Timothy 2.1, it says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So again, it's about passing on that sound doctrine. In 1 Timothy 4, 1, it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine whereunto thou hast attained. So as pastors especially, but it applies to all men, you know, so we've always got to put our brethren in remembrance to these good doctrines, you know, while avoiding those who teach contrary to that. In 1 Timothy 6.3, it says, If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words. Whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the, of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself, but godliness with contentment is great gain. And there's another warning in First Timothy one verse one. It says under Timothy sorry in verse two, under Timothy, my own son in the faith. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord, as I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went unto Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, 
which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith, so do. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigning, unfeigned, from which some having swerved have turned aside under vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understand neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. So we're to teach others the doctrines of Christ and also to teach them not to teach any other doctrines but those that they have learned. And that's why in 1 Timothy 5.17 it says, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honour, especially they who labour in word and doctrine. So even if you're not going to be a pastor, you should still labour in the word and doctrine. Not so the truth can be preached, but also so that you can pass that to your family. So your wife will also be chaste, keep her at home, and she will also be faithful. You know, so we need to we need to understand and study the word of God so that we can teach it. So you know, it's, it's important to spend that time in the word, to spend that time with the Lord, so that you can do that for your family. So the next point is going to be uh, being faithful, is having a good conscience in regard to sin. So in 1 John 1, 9 it says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if we say we, we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. And it says in 1 Timothy 5.22, it says, Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. So if you walk in the Spirit and you confess your sins to God, keeping a short account and a clean conscience before him, you know, we need to walk in holiness. Um, I won't read from Second Samuel 22, but it says, you know, I'll just read one verse, it says, Therefore the Lord hath recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness in his eyesight, about walking in holiness. So, but you also need to be honest in your dealings. Second Corinthians 8.20 says, Avoiding this, that no man should blame us in his disabundance which is administered by us, Providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. So, there are other points here, but obviously I'm out of time. But um, you need to have a good reputation before men. Um, I'll just read from First Timothy five twenty-five. It says, "Likewise, also the good works of some are manifest beforehand, and they that are otherwise cannot be hid." Um, so we should have a good report of men. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'll just recap that. So we need to be faithful in your marriage, so you have one wife till death, and discipline your children, raising them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So it's not just the nurture, but the admonition also. Um, be faithful in doctrine, teaching the truth to other faithful men, and your wife and children also. Uh, be faithful in keeping a clear conscience with God. Repent daily of your sins. Walk in the Spirit and keep your hands clean before the Lord. Be faithful in your reputation before men. So give them no reason to accuse you or to blaspheme God. And be faithful in your works. So uh, it's, it's about continuing in your works. So do good works and just continue in them. So let's pray.